Good afternoon to uh, chairman and panelists. Thank you very much for hearing us. Uh, today, we would like to introduce a very special case with um, uncomplicated type B aortic dissection. Uh, this is, this is a profile of the patient, the 61-year-old male. He, he has a history of hypertension, and the duration of the onset was two weeks. Uh, he has a chest pain, but with two weeks, we have some treatment, and the, now the patient has no chest pain anymore, no back pain. ECG, blood tests, and cardiac echo shows normal, in normal range. But the MSCT shows um, aortic dissection, type B. Please have a look. This is MSCT. You can see very clearly the dissection that the intima was uh, separate from the lumen and it shared the aortic to the false lumen and the true lumen. Here you can see the true lumen was collapsed and the false lumen is enlarged very big. And we can measure the false lumen enlarged um, about 24 millimeters in diameters. Here you can see. Uh, actually, uh, with this kind of patient, we have uh, previously we performed the open surgery, but now with the development of the, of the instrument and the skill, and we can perform the TVA, and this patient, this patient we has a diagnosis as uncomplicated type B aortic dissection with high risk feature. Why high risk feature? Because this patient has no chest pain, no. no abdominal pain and actually no ischemia of the organs, but the false lumen enlarged um, more than 22 millimeters in diameter. And actually the half, half of the false lumen was turbulent, and that shows a very high risk feature of the patient. And, and the plan, excuse me, can you read me? Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yes, please continue. Yes. Okay. okay. And I think it's our plan for this patient. And we are planning to perform uh, with a proximal uh, aortic di diameter. We measure about uh, 32 millimeters in diameter. And the length of the descending aortic about 25 millimeters. 25 millimeters, yeah, centimeters, I mean. And uh, Actually, we can measure from the intima rupture, intima uh, from the anterior tear to the left subclavian artery, only 1.1 centimeters, and that is not enough for the landing zone. And we want to extend the proximal landing zone to uh, to cover the left subclavian artery, but still we want to remain the flow to the left subclavian arteries. And now we are planned for the fenestrated. Okay, tiba. so so yeah. far, so we. Uh... Would like to ask uh, some question to the panelists. Do you have any comments about uh, this type of uh, patient, about uh, uh, our planning and discussion, and uh, what we are going to do, what we should do? So I would like to hear the uh, opinion from uh, Dr. Kenichin, uh, cardiovascular uh, surgeon. What do you think? Uh, so I think normally for the uh, type B, the chronic type B, the problem are the landing uh, zones. And uh, you can extend it into the arch. I think it doesn't really matter whether you uh, do a fenestrator. I think whatever is the simpler uh, technique, uh, whether it's a debunching or, or fenestrated branch. The problem is the distal, uh, which is usually, you know, and even if you successfully manage to uh, stent it, uh, you are hoping to achieve uh, false movement thrombosis and uh, resolution. Um, uh, you know, in, in our experience, we found that a lot of times, the uh, after about you know two three years, the uh, stand graft actually perforates, perforates through the uh, septum, and then the the problem recurs. So in this case, the dissection goes all the way down into the uh, visceral vessel. So that's going to be challenging. How far down uh, you're going to stand? If you leave that distal end in the uh, descending thoracic aorta, 
uh, it will probably in, you know, cause you a problem uh, later on, you, you have to extend it down. So um, maybe may I clarify your opinion that so basically in your uh, opinion you will cover the whole part of the thoracic aorta or you just cover the first part of the aortic? I would, you would have to cover all the way down to the uh, abdominal part of the uh, aorta at least down to the uh, celiac axis. So what about your opinion, Dr. Saipo? Thank you. Now, uh, being a cardiologist with a cardiothoracic surgeon side by side while doing this case, uh, I would uh, actually cover the left subclavian and I would consider chimney. And at the distal part, we surely will cover as long as we can. However, the risk of spinal ischemia is there. Therefore, we'll have a pre, I mean, uh, spinal drainage uh, put up before we do such things. And if we want to ever consider doing something in the abdomen, it should be done later as a staging procedure because doing the whole thing at one time will cause a higher risk of spinal ischemia. So can, can, you, uh, can you explain more uh, why you, you choose the chimney here? Is there any preference? Uh, again, because I'll be doing with my I mean, cardiothoracic surgeon. They don't do bypass. So they will rely on us to put in chimney from the brachial left subclavian artery chimney. So thank you, Dr. Saipu. So uh, opinion uh, from uh, to doctor is already covered as long as we can and also do something like a chimney or penetration for the left subclavian. So how about the uh, opinion from Dr. Brian? Yeah? I'm not. Uh, so. Yeah, I think it's uh, very important if you cover the left subclavian, it has to be protected with the bypass graft or a chimney, and that depends a lot on what individuals are comfortable with, because we've seen that uh, uh, 40 to 50 percent of cases with stroke or spinal ischemia almost always have the LSA covered. So having something like that is important, and also when you're doing something like this, uh, I don't know if there are ways to monitor uh, spinal cord ischemia so you can kind of be better prepared for it. They, uh, look for some uh, uh, potentials around there. So uh, I think I completely agree. And also the fact that it has to be done in a staged fashion because uh, this itself is quite a uh, task. Yeah. So what about your opinion, Dr. Patin? I think I agree with uh, him that we should cover the LSA uh, thing because there is a high chance that it would close and then cause the uh, thumb embolism. Yeah. Yes, uh, thank you. I think um, in the past we used to cover everything and we uh, we don't have um, penetrated probably, but uh, I think in this case it's very good if you have the penetration and you um, prepare and you set the MSA is very important. Yeah. So what about uh, you, Dr. Bosley? Um, yeah, I, I agree that uh, the left subclavian should be covered uh, Perhaps uh, to make it simple, I don't do a fenestrate, I mean, a chimney in this case. I've got surgeons who can actually just uh, uh, graph uh, between the left common carotid to left subclavian if that's required. Uh, I would also be very careful about uh, ending uh, the where to end. I, I think the last three centimeters or four centimeters below this, above the CDAC is important because otherwise the risk of uh, spinal ischemia is much more. So I will probably end uh, about one and a half uh, vertebra up from the ceiling axis, just to prevent the risk. Yeah. So, okay, so uh, as uh, almost uh, all the panelists uh, try to cover as long as you can and uh, try to preserve the left subclavian artery. So what about uh, your strategy, Professor Hong? Okay, thank you so much for the comments. So uh, actually our strategy for this case, we also do uh, uh, plan to do a finistrated uh, TIVA for this case. So next slide, please. So uh, uh, we uh, will show you how we can do, and uh, uh, this is a step-by-step -step, uh, doing in this case. Actually, in this case, we already uh, make uh, two puncture. One is at the right femoral artery with the uh, 12 branches, and the other one I uh, uh, use the six branches uh, from uh, 
uh, lab radian uh, to use the one uh, JR six uh, frame uh, to marker for the uh, lab sub radian. And uh, can you see the uh, uh, CT image? Okay, sorry. Uh, yes, very clear. Okay. Let's go down. Now, a nice, nice screen. Nice screen. Nice screen. Nice screen. No. Yep. Here, here, here. One. So, uh, the reason when uh, we choose from the right side, you can see here on the CT show that uh, the right side is connected to the uh, true lumen. And uh, the left side, we may have some uh, problem when we go to the full lumen here. So actually, can uh, can you uh, focus on this one? Yeah. So so, so the image uh, actually we already to take a uh, one asset from the right femoral and the other one from the uh, left uh, radian, as I mentioned before. And then the next slide, please. Okay. So here we are uh, showing you how we uh, make a, a, a stand up uh, finistration. Over there, you can see step by step. Uh, first of all, we have a two of uh, uh, pro produce uh, three uh, three hours of the stand graph, and then we measure uh, the position, the right position. We we make a hole. This is based on the measurement on the MSCT can guide us how to do it. And then we uh, use the short tip of the coronary Y uh, uh, to uh, make the marker. Uh, for the cone and uh, uh, to guide it, and after using a uh, suture, and we uh, uh, it started okay. Again. Uh, uh, after uh, the suture uh, goes, and uh, we retrieve it again inside the delivery system like this. But uh, uh, actually, for this guy, we already do it a few minutes ago. So, can you see the, the video? Uh, yes, the video very clear. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, yes, uh, a few minutes ago, our team already do do that. So first of all, we uh, have to relieve for the uh, three cell of the stand graph, and then after uh, our. Uh, but this is important thing that you have to determine where is the marker based on the connection of the stand graph with the very clearly when you uh, uh, see it under fluoroscopy. And that is aligned with the uh, arm side from uh, you know, at the end of the uh, delivery system over there. And then based on the uh, CT guide, our make a very precise uh, measurement and then make a hole. And then you can see here and uh, the suture, the, the hole here. Uh, also uh, guided by CT uh, with the uh, co-committant with the side of the left separator actually. Uh, here we make a whole uh, something about uh, uh, 10 mm. And after that, we can uh, rechip the whole thing inside the delivery system. But you uh, have to carefully in this step, all of the crowd of the stand should be go inside the delivery system here, and uh, by make sure that we can secure that the all the system is running very well. Here, this is picture show you uh, uh, the step by step uh, how we can do in this kind of case. Okay, do you have any uh, questions so far? Okay, it's quite clear. So, uh, Professor. Yeah, Professor Hong, so uh, uh, how, uh, uh, how much the diameter of the hole you punch, you, you, you be there? Yeah, 10 mm. What is the diameter of the hole when you puncture for? for yeah, I, I just, I just, 10. just okay. I just Okay, so the 10. diameter is 10 based yeah. on the diameter of the subtracting yeah, yes, artery, yes, right? Yes, yeah. so, uh, based on the CT guide. Okay, so uh, okay, so actually, uh, when we see the here, the hole actually is smaller compared to the diameter of the left subclavian artery. Uh, uh, try to avoid the leaking later on. 
I and see. Uh, we, uh, we we can see the hole here very near the uh, the rings uh, to make it because if it's too far from the ring and then you can make the hole the the, the strand is de deformed. So that's why you try to connect. Uh, it's very near the ring and then you you suture very near there. And uh, during the procedure, you can see Professor Hong already uh, uh, see the marker. And based on the marker, you, you know exactly where the hole is because after that you, you put on the fluoroscopy and you, you, you need to use a marker to remind you the way to go. Yes, please uh, go ahead, uh, Professor Hong. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you... Uh, I, I got it quite quick and I was so sorry for that. So uh, actually this is a delivery system as a stem graphs. We already prepared before. So can you, can you see that? Okay. So we we would like to uh, show. Uh, now I only see the full uh, screen. Only for the screen. Okay. So uh, uh, can you can you zoom on the, our hand and show it on the main screen? Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So this is a, a device already yes. uh, prepared before. But uh, I would like to improvise us. So uh, uh, based on the MSCT guide for this patient, the 60 degrees LAO or shot is the best view to a perpendicular with the uh, Ayata uh, arch. Uh, so by that way, we can find out uh, where is the direction, where is the way to advance the delivery to make sure that the whole the penetration how we already made it is going right into the uh, LSA. So, uh, can you come back to the yeah, the screen? I will show you. On your screen. Okay, so by the 60 degree, so uh, we can see here is a marker uh, at the, uh, we can see the head, head shape uh, a marker and uh, below it, you can see the coronary uh, uh, Y as marker of the, the hole already the received inside the delivery system here. So uh, by that, yes, so, uh, uh, by that uh, projection, uh, 60 degree L LAO, so we can find out which is the best position during, during the time we advance the delivery system. We have to maintain the same position, the same uh, marker alive on the marker of the, uh, at the end of the uh, stand graph uh, and uh, the, at the, the uh, distance side of the um, uh, a flashing arm um, of the stand graph here. So now I think so. Now we uh, can show you uh, what we have already to do for this patient to find out the true lumen uh, uh, of uh, this case. So can you show the. Yes. Uh, from the rear femoral artery, we use the normal no, picture you can see here, and we uh, uh, tap a very small amount of contrast. So by this way, we can go step by step, advance uh, a little bit, uh, uh, not too much. So, and we can check uh, this is uh, uh, right to Newman or not. So you can see here. You can see here, so we, we uh, found that this is go right uh, to Newman and we uh, continue to advance. Yes. Okay. Next, please. Okay. Yeah. More. Okay. Yes. So by that way, we confirm that we go inside the true lumen. And by this uh, away of 60 degree, you can see the very clearly uh, where is the uh, left uh, carotid and where is the uh, left uh, 
supplier actually you can see here okay now we uh, now we uh, continue to use the uh, steep wire Okay, sorry, I need to be tight. <laughs> so, uh, can you explain uh, what you put in the lab subclavian? You put the GEL uh, guiding catheter, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I put JR to uh, okay, so you, you yes, put uh, JR in the lap, uh, lap uh, subcarbian artery. Yes. Uh, which yes. device you put there? Uh, JR. Just in right. Yeah. Just in right. Uh, Professor Hong. Yes. Um, uh, can you uh, go through the, as you do this procedure, can you describe it to us? I think uh, mo mo not, most of us don't have much experience doing what you're doing, so it'd be good to you take us through the step-by-step -step of what you're doing. Yes, so uh, that's previous step we already do uh, in a few minutes ago before the live transmission, but now we uh, exchange step wife uh, through the big tail wire to the uh, descending aorta, you can see here. Can you see the light? Okay. Yes, please. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Yes. Okay, now. Yeah. Uh, because uh, we use from the beginning the trail friendships for the right femoral, so now we uh, exchange direct with the delivery uh, stand grab delivery system here. And uh, in the, our experience, of the patient, we just use only the uh, local uh, anesthesia. We uh, do not uh, need to use the GA for the uh, patient. It's a very good uh, pain relief, and the patient usually have no problem and recover very soon. Okay, you read for me. How dear? How dear? How dear? How dear? How dear? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now you can see we advance. Uh, what's the what's the French size of the device? Uh, this is the twenty two. French. Twenty two French. Yes. And you you pre closed it in a crisscross session. I I, I gather. Yeah. I think in a lot of center when when we do uh, primary PCI and then uh, now we need to facing a lot of case of acute uh, type B dissection and then we somehow eat, we need to do okay. the primary TVA and it is a technique is important because usually the intervention cardiology is also this, uh, type of procedure uh, to cut down the, the timing similar to the primary PCI. So uh, I know that in your yeah, other center, maybe the okay. uh, vascular surgeon will do this type of procedure. Okay, so, so now we make So a... you see here, we put the device in line. Yes. Okay, now we adjust a little bit because uh, we obey all the, all the direction when we uh, advance the delivery system. So can you see the S marker over there? just nearby the JL catheter, JL catheter over there. So I think this is, uh, this is a, a very good position. I uh, quite satisfied with that, so I'm 
going to release uh, some cell over there. So actually, this one is the first case we performed the penetrating technique in our institute. Okay. Now we are set to the left femoral artery to check whether the position of the stem graph is a precise position or not. Yeah. Maybe that we go to the two them. Now we can test. Yeah. So looks I mean just so for the audience benefit, you are putting another wire up the left femoral artery to yes, yes, yeah. um, so, get into yeah, the aortic yeah, right. uh, the, the yeah. arch and uh, yes and to uh, to make a um, some cine to uh, find out the best way yeah first we we have to check whether the the guide goes to the true lumen or the false lumen from the femoral artery yeah. let's have a look okay to be yes It seem to be go to the uh, four uh, rumors. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. Okay. Yes. This time we go to the true lumen. Already, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, connect now. We make a scene. Can I see something? Yep. I, I, I would say that this is an elegant way of uh, wiring inside the true lumen because uh, they pay attention to where the wire is going. Yes. Otherwise, I think in other centers, uh, an iris will be appropriate because yes. it will look whether you're in the true lumen or false lumen. But yes. this is an amazing way. Yes, very good, very, very good idea. But actually here in our center, we don't have uh, iris for AR taking. So usually we uh, find out the true and uh, full lumen based on the uh, imaging uh, from MSCT and then based on uh, our experience, we uh, usually use uh, uh, some uh, uh, kind of something like a very safety uh, uh, catheter, like a pigtail to find out first. And for the second, why we uh, uh, do some uh, angel gram and find out the uh, way. And uh, it is go along with the previous uh, device. So, by that way, we can confirm that it's uh, go with uh, the true lumen. But actually, this this is the uh, uh, pigtail only for the uh, purpose of the, um, doing a cine to uh, make sure to mark the position when we decide to release the device. Okay. Now ready. So now we are, because the blood pressure is something around the, uh, 130, so we want to uh, lower it uh, something about less than uh, uh, 110 is okay. We use uh, natural glycerin. Yeah. Okay, this is okay right now. So uh, 
I am going to uh, release. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we need to advance a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Again. Okay. I think it's a good position now. I slowly really. Very slowly. Can check again. Okay, one more. Oh. We have it. Yes. So on the screen is uh, the guy. Why is behind the the furniture thing, right? Yes, maybe. But I will try to. I think the device needs to go in a little more. Is it, yeah. At what point can you recapture it and uh, advance it more into the sending aura? Yeah. It almost looks like. Yeah. It is uh, definitely caudal to the origin of Sophavian. I don't know yeah. what you guys think. Yeah. But uh, when we do the bifurcated endographs and the iliacs, and the gold comes in with these preloaded wires, which which makes a life a lot more easier. No. Uh, 
it's unfortunately you're looking at a 2D angiogram and we're trying to see if it lines up. Uh, I think in this situation we have a two options. One option is continue with that one and another option we usually have a, like a B plan because we already got a guy wire there so we can still continue the case with a chimney yeah. like a bone solution. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter very much. Okay, uh, because some, somehow is uh, you, you you try to align the furniture thing with the ape marker. Yeah. Um, but some somehow you you see uh, it might happen in the real life. Yes. Usually when uh, when we do like that, we uh, we can easily to find the hole by itself based on the ape marker. Okay, no problem because. Uh, in some case, when we advance, they may have a yeah, but see, slowly yeah. when when we do, we we can uh, steam can change the position. Okay, yeah. I mean, the other option is also injecting from the subclavian uh, yeah. catheter. Okay. So you really see where the dye is. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, if you're seeing your proximal or distal to the. Yeah. Uh, because in this way, because the sand graph is not fully expand, so even you inject like that, somehow it's like a three dimension. You cannot uh, identify the very precise the position. So I, uh, it is a one option, I think. But uh, we we can go uh, straight so forward by that yes, way. Yes, I, I think so. so. Why not to open a more than ten millimeter? What he has opened there. Yes. Why not open the hole, just the thought hole area there and because already proximal cap is closed and distal you also have graft. Why not to open a more ear there so it becomes easier to uh, capture into the wire? Uh, because when, when we make a penetration like that, usually you uh, you try to avoid the leaking later on. So if you make a too big hole and then you have a leak from the left subclavian and then later on you have uh, continued to, uh, to going up of the aneurysm. So try to okay. sealing the whole thing, and then uh, okay. in this situation so, you so, try to just just enough okay. side for yeah. the for the cover stand. Yeah. Okay, I think so. Uh, I will release this time. Yeah. So yes, very nice. Can I ask um, the 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 panelists? Uh, I'm, uh, you know, and also Professor Hong Wen, would you consider recapturing the device and then uh, reorienting? Is it is it a a strategic a st possible strategy? And if not, why not? Uh, I myself, I I try to adjust a little bit, but I don't think like it's releasing a device. Yeah, but, right? uh, for safety reasons, I don't want to adjust more in this case. I think it depends a lot on what the device IFU is. Yeah. I think. Uh, I'm not sure about the valiant. Uh, oh, okay. What point? I think uh, at this point, I think we are committed, right? Okay. Yeah, I, I guess it's usually. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the details, oh, okay. but I will probably try that as a first option. Okay. Yes. Do you guys use a time frame within which you don't get it? You're concerned about uh, spinal ischemia. At what point do you guys say, "Okay, I'm going to board and go to step number two? Yeah. So actually, so for in our experience, for the many cases, so, uh, acute uh, aortic dissection, we usually cover uh, all the way of the left uh, subclavian artery, and uh, uh, so far we get just only one case uh, uh, ischemic, but uh, the patient recover after two days. So uh, we uh, try for this case to preserve, but the left subclavian. But I don't think we 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 we, we should try more because of the Safety for the reason I don't want to achieve it and I don't want to make a trash it more. Yeah. So uh, basically in a, yeah. in the Vietnam National Heart Institute, we do quite a lot of cases of acute um, aortic dissection type B. And for acute setting, usually you can cover the lap subcrapian without any com compromise. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a series about 160 case something, and we have only two case with the ischemic spinal, and then we just drain, and we we continue with the BP, increasing the BP, and patient recover after two days. So basically, for a Q setting, it doesn't matter. If it happened, it happened before the uh, the scenario. So if the patient got the spinal ischemic, the patient when came in with the spinal ischemic. So that's why for acute setting, we just don't care because we need to save time and also to save the life of the patient.
but for uh, for the case a little bit like the uh, subacute scenario, and then we need to consider to complete revascularization and and restore the own the flow or main branch. So basically, you, you can see here, uh, like uh, we already cover the left subclavian, huh? okay. yeah. Yes. So now I uh, I intend to put the second strand graph just up. Uh, just above the cilia. So just while you're getting that ready, can I check uh, on the panel um, which uh, which site uh, would the cardiologist do this? I think in in, in heart center we don't do this uh, much anymore. The cardiac surgeon, if it's thoracic, and the, uh, the vascular surgeon with abdominal, and usually uh, with some involvement of the radiologist, but. What about uh, in, in your respective countries, uh, who does this procedure? So, uh, I'm from the US and uh, uh, I live in uh, South Dakota, so it's, it's, it's very, you know, very sparsely populated. Uh, the next biggest city is a six hour drive, so you can cover the Europe continent. So, uh, we usually team up with, uh, you know, vascular surgeons and we do it as a team. Anything complicated by, uh, you know, fenestrated aureoles. If it's not feasible, we send it to a bigger city where they do this more often. But I think uh, the other things we also do is in addition to making this hole, you can also preload them with a wire. And once you have the device there, then you can start fishing it from from the uh, you know uh, uh, from the femoral end as opposed to the subclavian end. There it is. That correct? Yeah, there it is. That sometimes helps. But uh, I'm I'm hoping Gore and Cook and a couple of other companies they should come out with this one. But uh, the short answer is it's usually done as a teamwork. So we, we uh, are... Dr. Patil? In India, it's more of an international radiologist okay. and the international cardiologist who are doing this work. So do you see the radiologist? International radiologist is a more into this and then international cardiologists yeah. also are getting into their work now. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Okay, very good. So this is a second piece with uh, size uh, 30, 430 by uh, 150. So, Doctor, can I see? Yeah, can I have your opinion about the distal part? Uh, Kenny, 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 Kenny. There's a question for you. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what could you do for the distal part of the stand? Do you 
just leave it there or you what, okay. what you usually do? Um, so I, I think we I was doing this quite a number of years two years ago and we were seeing the stand basically rupture to the to the septum. So I uh, kind of don't really uh, stand for the, the ones that go all the way down. Uh, if it's a limited and they stop at the uh, celiac axis, I will try to then land it uh, beyond. Um, so that's why I was saying earlier that you know, we need to go down as low as we can. Of course, there is always a parallel factor grid. So at this point, if either we call out very quickly uh, and look for resolution of the uh, uh, fall to the we need to be prepared to extend uh, the ascent uh, further down. Oh, wow. the, the future. So, Dr. Saifu, what do you do for the distal part of the descent? Yeah, I, I believe they would have uh, measured the the diameter closely. And uh, I agree if uh, you don't measure it properly, oh. it might cause problem later on. Okay. I've had any, uh, a, an experience whereby we use the cook and uh, using a bag best stand below that. And we had a retrograde flow from the uh, false lumen. And that really is troublesome because it becomes very huge in the thoracic cavity. So, uh, what do you do now, Professor Hong? Uh, yes. How about the distal part uh, of the stand? Uh, actually, we already uh, deployed the second stand, and uh, here you can uh, see. Uh, can you see the picture? Yeah, this is. Uh, uh, proximal part of the stand, you can see the good cover just uh, right up to um, uh, left uh, carotid and uh, no endolic uh, was found, but I think this position is uh, okay. So uh, actually we, we, we turn uh, from the plan A to plan B because the penetration in this case is not uh, occurred by as we uh, uh, expected uh, before. and. Uh, and now, can you show the distant part of the sorry, a little bit uh, technical uh, trouble. Can you can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, can, can you see the Yes. Yeah, this is, uh, I think, uh, the last picture, the distant part of span just above uh, cilia. So I think uh, we, we do not uh, doing any more in this case. How about the opinion? Well, how about your opinion in the finish, uh, Dr. Rasas? With regards to stopping here, time, time. Yes. yeah, I think I, I would agree with that, and uh, probably wait and watch, follow them up, and see. Um, now that you've tacked up most of the dissection up top, if the false lumen below thrombosis or regresses, it's good. If not, then I think uh, definitely a fenestrated graft for this patient in the future. How about you, Dr. Patin? I think we should stop here. Yes, Dr. Rosley. Yeah. It looks nice, and I think uh, once you're here. Um, and uh, with the, the, are they going? Are you going to put in a covered stand at the subclavian or? Yeah. Would, yes. Now. So, so I think uh, they will uh, stop for the distal part and maybe come back uh, for the proximal part and with the uh, chimney as a bone now. So, uh, uh, I think uh, is. Uh, I see any comment from our panelists. So, Professor Hung, thank you very much for the case, and uh, we uh, need to close the section at this moment. Okay. And 